After a short and disastrous reunion with Dad, uh, that, didn't, that didn't end well, did it? At least we made it to the Citadel here. Let's go see what these Brotherhood people are up to. Don't talk down to me, Lions. I had nowhere else to turn. You must help us. Project Purity has been overrun. Yes, i would heard reports of an incident there. What details can you give us? The Enclave. They've attacked Project Purity. James is dead. There may be more. I don't know. You have to do something. Then it's as we fear. Madison, I'm sorry this happened. I wish we could have done something. Then do something now. They've taken over the purifier. Lions, they cannot be permitted to have control over it. It's not right. No, no, no. Calm down. You know as well as I do that the purifier doesn't work. It's <laughs> Dr. Lee's all glitched out. She looks like she's hyped. That's not true. James, he found what's been missing. She's nervous. <laughs> Is that so? Does the Enclave know this? No, I don't think... I don't know. I, I just don't know what's happening anymore. All right, Madison. It'll be okay. Now, this is James's daughter, I presume? I can see the resemblance. Yes. She knows what we need. vault Tech computer, something to locate equipment. Please help her. Very well, we'll sort this all out. Well, something to be said for the fact that at least they open the doors for us, right? I need to rest, lie down or something. This is just too much. Rothschild should help you, but don't forget that he's Brotherhood. I've never trusted them. Be careful what you tell them. Yeah, well, don't look a gift horse, a gift horse too much in the mouth, Dr. Lee. Father, I know that you do not wish to At least they're helping and not... But there are some who say not against us. Oh, Sarah, my dear sweet girl, so eager you are to rush headlong into battle. But no, not now, not yet. Our time will come, fear not. Yes, but yes, Elder, I understand. You honor us with your presence here. So this is the Elder Lions. You have my condolences. Your father was a good man. Talk to Scribe Jameson. She is our keeper of the scrolls. She will want to know what you have found. She spends most of her time in the archives. You'll find them in A-Ring, near the Great Hall. The outcasts are a result of my greatest mistake, but a mistake I'm proud of nonetheless. When I came here, I realized for the first time that the Brotherhood's technology could truly save the survivors in this wasteland. I chose to help them, even if it meant putting the Brotherhood's interests at risk. Some of my soldiers called me a hero. Others called me a traitor. The dissenters left my command, calling themselves outcasts to mock me. I cannot fault their dedication, even if I find them lacking in compassion. Only in a very broad sense, the Brotherhood's oaths are to protect humanity's progress, but not necessarily every human. The outcasts and members of the Brotherhood in other places consider it a waste to protect most people. After all, they say, everyone knows how to make another human, but the secrets to making a P-94 plasma rifle are all but lost. Even now, a year after they left, the wounds of their departure are still sore. Some of my soldiers are angry about it. They see it as an insult to me. Bless them for their loyalty. They're more angry about it than I ever was. Others understand their decision. Sometimes I hear them wondering if they should have gone with them. I can't blame them, but I stand by my decision, and I respect theirs. Has it been worth the cost in lives and resources to protect people like you from the super mutants? You tell me. I suspect my daughter's squad helped save your life. 
And most of our recent recruits have come from those we've saved over the years. It's cost us, but we've saved many lives and made the Capital Wasteland a place where people can live. Yes, I'd say that's being worth it. Yes, let's speak of other things. More than anyone else, I dare say. Certainly enough to know they're the greatest threat the Capital Wasteland has ever faced. The Brotherhood of Steel has encountered the Enclave before, you see. Over 30 years ago, back in California. Then they were led by a President Richardson. Now we've got this Eden to contend with. It matters not now, as before they seek to control and destroy. All in the guise of restoring order. Your father, I fear, was just the beginning. The Brotherhood is an old organization going back to the years just after the war. We are but a part of it. What would you like to know? The Brotherhood began on the West Coast. It exists there still. We were dispatched to this location many years ago. In truth, the Brotherhood of Steel has been struggling for years, both here and back home. Honor, truth, courage. These virtues seem to have little meaning in these troubled times, I'm afraid. Ah, no. That's the real question, isn't it? Our orders were, and are, to acquire any and all advanced technology, and we have, to the best of our abilities. But when I realized the extent of the super mutant threat, I felt it was my responsibility to aid the people in their struggle against them. Unfortunately, my superiors back west disagree with my assessment of the situation. They feel I've grown too attached to the local populace. And they're right. In any event, the Enclave's arrival changes everything. It's been over 20 years since we arrived, and we've been struggling to contain and eradicate the super mutants for nearly as long. With the arrival of the Enclave, I have a terrible feeling the super mutants are the least of our worries. So be it. What more did you want to know? So be it. Would you believe no? It's pathetic, really, considering we've been fighting those abominations for nearly 20 years. In all that time, all we've managed to do is to contain the threat, hold them back so they don't overrun every blasted settlement out here. But we don't really know anything. Where they're from, why they've infested the DC ruins. And now here we are, holed up in our citadel. Low on resources, low on troops. It's enough to make an old man so very tired. Why, yes. Yes, indeed, there is someone. Our intrepid paladin Gunny trains all initiates in the use of power armor when they're ready. Under the circumstances, I will allow Gunny to train you as well. You'll find him in the Bailey. I will send word that I've given my approval. Of course. Actually, I think that's him right there. Hail. Initiate, you've got a lot of nerve to interrupt. Oh, my apologies, stranger. I thought you were one of these worthless initiates. I swear, these kids would be lost without me here to powder their asses. I am charged with the duty of turning these maggots into brothers of steel. With the threat of the Enclave, they're likely going to be pressed into service before they've taken the oath. So I've got a lot of work to do. Heard you were coming. Yeah, I can train you, but don't ask me to like it. 
My initiates sweat blood, and you just get a free pass? Anyway, you ready for this? Now look, to wear power armor, first thing you need to do is relax your muscles. Let the suit do the work, okay? Now you. What aid can I offer you, outsider? Killing unarmed civilians makes me sick. Come over here. Try fighting someone who shoots back, fucking cowards. <laughs> Why do you think I ride these initiates so hard? I make training hell, so fighting those uglies won't be. Damn initiates. Okay. Now, if you wanted to role play as either a, I don't know, Brotherhood of Steel or Enclave, or you just want to get your power armor on as early as possible. If you have the DLC actually going through the whole Operation Anchorage thing, um, even if you just kind of fast track through it and don't, you know, explore the place and all that, uh, it doesn't take all that long. If you just kind of run through it, but uh, that gives you automatic power armor training just for essentially just starting the uh, what do you call it, the simulation part of that DLC. Very well. Thank gives it to you automatically. Me. Anyway, a lot better than. Uh, rushing through like the storyline to get up to this point in the main story for me when it comes to the story i like to uh you know kind of progress through it naturally experience the story type of thing rather than rush through it with one particular goal in mind like i want to get this perk or i want to get that or whatever and then having to skip a lot of the good stuff just to get to that point that's that's kind of tedious operation anchorage once you played it i don't to me it doesn't have much of a fallout 3 feel to it personally um, it's got some good perks and some kind of OP stuff to use, I guess. Notice I'm I'm really not even using that just for that reason. But uh, besides that, it just doesn't really have the feel. So it, it kind of takes me out of the whole immersion thing. Hail. One thing to note about these Brotherhood is um, they have this quest for technology and stuff. And Elder Lions, if he wanted to play on that, he could tell his quote-unquote superiors back on the West Coast, you know. Um, that basically wherever these super mutants are coming from, that they need that tech and they need to get their hands on it and whatever means necessary justifies that. And you know what? That'd probably get a superiors off his back and maybe even bring back some of the outcasts. They would just keep that mindset. Hey, wherever these super mutants are coming from, whatever's making them, we need that. If they're so obsessed with tech, well, it doesn't get much better than that. Things that can create these walking abominations out of people or whatever they come from, right? Um, that's some pretty advanced tech right there, or a twisted version of some advanced tech, whatever the case. If that's what they're after, well, there you go. Sounds like it'd be right up their alley, and it'd certainly be a way to play this, kind of downplay the whole protecting the innocents in the wasteland thing, and play up on the whole, uh, super mutant, what do you call it, transforming technology or whatever. You know, it's a lot of people, or a lot of these Brotherhood of Steel troopers are really just people, just doing their thing. I'll tell you what, 
Um, first time we faced some big enemies and, and met them, you know, they shot big bullets at our big enemies, okay? Uh, no questions asked. So, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend type thing. At least they're on our side. They may have their own, I don't know, agenda or whatever, but at least they're not actively coming against us too. It's not as if everything else in the wasteland isn't trying to kill us. At least these guys are on our side. Well, at least until we piss them off or something, which I don't really plan on doing. But, uh, yeah, nice to have them as friends. At least, at least they got that going for them. All right, get down here in the lab. And this is like my favorite thing ever. Liberty Prime. It's so cool. Just one of the one of my favorite characters in the game, and it's a robot, honestly. He just sounds so badass. <laughs> he really does. All right, we can get a little uh, Brotherhood background from this guy here. Yes, hello. I've heard about you. We don't get many strangers here in the Citadel, especially those who walk about unescorted. I am Scribe Bowditch. If you require something, simply ask. It's a rather sad story, I'm afraid. Last year, some of our soldiers had grave disagreements with the decisions of Elder Lyons. Disagreements spiraled out of control, and there was a schism in the ranks. The loyal soldiers practically threw out the dissenters. Now they call themselves the Outcasts. Where Elder Lyons has fought to protect the people of the Capital Wasteland, the Outcasts demanded we move on and leave them to their fates. They insisted there was more important technology to be recovered and a scientific base in the ruins of Fort Independence to the West. As callous as their decision may be, it's more in line with our original mission. Elder Lyons is an inspiration to us, but to them, he's a traitor. The soldiers rallied behind Paladin Kasdan, who was one of Elder Lion's original squad. They served together for over 20 years. Kasdan was well respected and every bit as loyal to the Brotherhood as Elder Lion's. He just disagreed with the interpretations of our oaths. But when disagreements turned into fistfights, he left with the outcasts. We lost more allies that day than we ever have to any battle. Lyons and Kasdan would have to agree to any sort of reconciliation, and that's pretty unlikely. They're both quite proud and stubborn. For me, I just wish there was a way we could all agree that at least we're still on the same side. There are bigger problems out there, after all. As much as some of our soldiers would like to see them shot for deserting, there's not much we can do. We're too busy with the super mutants. Meanwhile, they're busy seeking out new technology and trying to get back in contact with the Brotherhood out west. So our paths rarely cross, but it's never pretty when they do. I just hope things cool down before it gets worse. It is a rather discouraging subject, isn't it? Why, a great many things. There are three orders within the scribes, you see, each dedicated to a different field of study. Of course, there's the Order of the Sword, Order of the Shield, and Order of the Quill. The Order of the Sword develops and maintains the Brotherhood's weapons. The Order of the Shield does the same for our power armor and defenses. The Order of the Quill is responsible for recovering and preserving knowledge, ancient and otherwise. I am Proctor of the Order of the Shield. I oversee the others in my order and make sure our defenses are up to snuff. Do you know how long it took to fortify these ruins? From the husk of the Pentagon, I carved a grand citadel. No easy task, my friend. Ah, but that was yesterday, when all we had to worry about was those damn super mutants. The Enclave, now, that's a different problem altogether. Let me know if you need something else. They're sporting some pretty impressive power armor, I'll give them that. The advanced Mark II, but that's all right. With a few modifications, our own armor will more than handle anything they throw at it. They're relentless, like nothing I've ever seen before. I honestly think they see our brothers in power armor as some kind of canned meal. Some of the pieces we've had brought back, men and women ripped in half, some pulled through their armor. Just horrible. 
I suppose that I can. The Brotherhood can make use of wasteland currency to trade. Oh, yes, I can. In fact, I suspect I could write several texts on the various details of the Brotherhood. But I suspect you're in a hurry. So what particulars would you like to know? I'm afraid the answer to that is a lot more nuanced than others might suggest. Brotherhood members are sworn to acquire and protect technology of the past, but not everyone interprets these oaths in the same way. Elder Lyons sees these duties as part of a larger dedication to protect the innocent. Some, like the outcasts, disagree with these priorities. I like to think that I've still got some big achievements left in me, although some of my joints seem to disagree these days. I'll tell you what the lowlights of my time have been, though. Every time I've been shot at. I'm a scribe, not a soldier. It seems like whichever challenge we're facing is always the biggest one. Survival at first, then expansion, and now cohesion. We've seen plenty of wasteland freaks or would-be dictators. They're not too bad. At least we've faced that sort of thing before. But more recent events, like the schism with the outcasts, those are the problems that worry me. Okay. Anything else? Farewell. All right. Well, uh, I, I'm trying not to make this a, a snooze fest, but if I bypass a lot of this stuff, you know, I could spend all day here talking to people. You can talk to just about everyone here and look through all these computers. You can find little things about landmarks in, in the D.C. area and people in the D.C. area and people that have come and gone and even learn some history about, you know, the timing of certain events and stuff. All kinds of things that can be gleaned from the computers and people here and stuff. I don't think I've I've even seen half of it, honestly. And I've gone around here, you know, investigating and talking to people and stuff. But uh, try to cover some of it. Anyway, lot, lots of background. Um, even some stuff into the vaults, which is actually part of uh, our uh, storyline quest here. We need to find some way to get access to a Gek, which is why we're here. And that's going to lead us to one of the vaults. And the location of that vault will come with the location of a lot of others. And even a little background on some of those. Although, one thing to note... A lot of it's really secretive. There's a lot of hush-hush classified stuff regarding these vaults. And that tells you that what they were doing when they closed those vault doors and sealed them away after the bombs fell was almost as bad as what was going on above ground. I mean, science... War never changes. Science doesn't change either. It's some heartless shit. <laughs> okay, scientists are all cool with it until they're the lab rat. Oh, yeah, then it's, then it's you know... It's not uh, it's not so fun when the, uh, when the rabbit or the deer's got the gun, right? Okay, so... Anyway... Yeah, I know all in the name of advancement. I'll tell you what, just like these Brotherhood people, just like the DEA, weird analogy, but it's kind of true, is if you're on a mission to quote-unquote war on drugs, right? Okay, well, uh, all they do is they find somebody and they look for their boss. Then they find all those people and then they look for their bosses. Then they find those people and let them go. Let them ship drugs into the country, even pay them to do it, right? So that they can catch the next big guy. And that's their justification for this endless quote-unquote war on drugs. No, it's a fucking cash cow so they can steal money from the taxpayers to justify all these bloated salaries that no one really keeps track of, except for the people that are getting paid. Yeah, sure I'm not stealing from the tax coffers, says the guy that's passing out the paychecks, including his own, right? Okay, um, that kind of agenda where you have that endless, mindless stuff where you have a mission, right? But you have no goal. There's no end to it. These Brotherhood guys, okay, if they get all the tech, then what do they do with it once they've got it? Good question. The elders sent word of your arrival. I am Scribe Peabody. Welcome, etc. Now, I'm really very busy. Is there something you needed? You want to talk to Scribe Jameson? She's the archivist, not me. Until next time. We've been over this. A slight modification to one system and all the subroutines go haywire. Don't worry, I'm on it. I come to you for results, not excuse- hey, Quartermaster Durga here, stranger. I have to say, I'm not sure what you're doing in my armory. We run a tight ship. And unless Elder Lion says so, we don't trade with outsiders. Quartermaster out. All right. All, all right, right. So we need to get permission, I'll just like we did with the power armor. Hopefully. Oh, there he is. Like right Head there. To That's convenient. Of James. 
This is not normally something that we do. Trade with outsiders has proven to be problematic in the past. However, considering the circumstances, so be it. I'll send word to Durga that you have full access to trade. Ah, yes. Everyone asks about the robot. Hard not to, I admit. His name is Liberty Prime. Very patriotic. Built by a very proud nation during a very desperate time. We've had about as much success getting him working as they did. You should speak with Scribe Rothschild. He can tell you more. Hail. Well, well I gotta speak to him anyway about this whole Gek business. May I start by saying that I am sorry for your loss. I was acquainted with your father many years ago. The world has lost one of its few remaining visionaries. I have been a part of the Brotherhood for many years. Enough that I was here when Project Purity first began. I did not work directly with your father. He and his team valued their independence, and I respected that. Think nothing of it. Now, Dr. Lee has explained your predicament. You need to locate some Vault-Tec equipment. A Gek? <laughs> Goodness no, certainly not. I must say that there are some who doubt such a device really exists, let alone works. If, however, you share your father's determination, I may be able to assist you in locating one. Possibly. I'm afraid I won't be able to assist you directly. The news Dr. Lee has brought will require me to be elsewhere. I can, however, give you access to an old pre-war computer from Vault-Tec. It may have the information you need. You'll find the terminal in the archives in the A-Ring. You are welcome. If you require further assistance, I may be able to help. All right. Let's go talk about all this trading stuff here. That's what I'm interested in. There's one more merchant, although I'm probably going to not be making the trip all the way down here to this merchant very often. It's a lot of loading screens, but... I received word from Elder Lyons. He says that you have permission to trade with us. Good for you. Oh, not sarcastic at all. Well, let's see if you got any ammo. Yeah, I suppose. Now, as we deal with more enemies that have more energy-based weapons, that means they're going to have more energy-based ammo. Which, since I'm not using it, is great to sell. So that I can buy ammo that I am going to use. And you know what? I'm kind of interested in those... Uh, those guns right there, speaking of ammo, I can go trade those. Which is probably what I'll do after I leave here. Um, I'll just go run some errands. I'll go trade in some guns, any other tech that I found, sensor modules, just all that junk. And I'll probably head back to the house, drop off whatever, and then I'll uh, find a place to uh, kind of hook back up and we'll start from there. Uh, it's probably some place close to uh, the next vault I want to visit. Uh, along with whatever we do after this, I want to go get the science bobblehead because I think we'll be we'll be near it. Go get the repair bobblehead also. Maybe even head to Paradise Falls. I kind of want my follower, who I should have had way long time ago, Clover. Should have had her way back when, but um, I want to go get her. It's kind of convenient that we're very evil right now, so uh, shouldn't be a problem. Be with you. I super I understand, sir. High, but but the outcasts have stolen a great deal the of our uncatalogued equipment. Is... Alright, so we'll eventually get to talk to this uh, scribe that um, we can trade the holotags in with. She's also right there where the computer we need to go to to find out where the gek's at and all that stuff. It's all kind of right next to right next to each other. Get that out of the way. Yeah, this whole Brotherhood of Steel thing, this whole chivalry thing, that's all fine and dandy. I mean, I guess as long as you have a quest, then you can be the chivalrous knight in shining armor, get it? They're all out here in their shiny power armor. But um, as long as they have that quest, then they have a purpose, but their quest really has no goal. Like I say, if you get all the technology, then do what with it? Especially if you've let humanity fall by the wayside along the way. Um, it's kind of like the search for the Holy Grail. Okay, you get it. Then what? 
what are you Jesus now or something? I mean, seriously. I mean, as long as you've got the quest, you've got a purpose. Once the quest is done, then you have no purpose anymore. Like I say, like the DIA or the War on Terror. Okay, or, or you know, just whatever. Whatever just big bloated thing that has this moral uh, facade of, of, of purpose. And it, it, it's really not. Honestly, I mean, okay, it's, it's busy work to do, but it has no goal in mind. There is no end point where you say, okay, I've done it, right? There is no finish line to that. It's just something you, you perpetually do, and the good that would come from it would be if you ever finish, but you don't. You never finish. You, you're always on this quest, and, and honestly, when you lose the whole chivalry thing too, like those outcasts and like everyone else saying, let, let the settlers die. They need a little help. Um pushing them along towards death, then, you know, we've got big guns to do it. And they basically run over people to pick up their, their scraps, the same scraps that, that those people used to kill each other in the first place. Okay, so you get all the laser weapons and all the atomic bombs. What? So next time you, you, you make it count and everybody dies? You know, what's the purpose? I'm just saying. So, anyway. I mean, their whole, you know scribes and this and that and the whole you know round table mentality and you know the knights and king arthur and blah 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 and you know all, all that's very cool and chivalrous and all that but without the chivalry it's dead it really is but at least these people here well having turned the tables a little bit and are actually helping the locals and taking advantage of this technology and like i say there's even a way that you could play on that you know and go find the technology that's making these super mutants and then repurpose it to do something good. I mean, if you make abominations out of people, maybe you can help some people with the same kind of, you know, just reverse engineer whatever they're doing type of thing. But you know, people, um, I don't know. Any, anyway, just science. Blah. Bad taste in my mouth. All right, now, I don't know if, if browsing through all these vaults is what gets them on my pit boy. I just know that either between this or talking to Scribe Rothschild or whatever, um, all the locations wind up on your pit boy and you at least have a marker that you can head towards if you want to go to one of the vaults. Word of your ordeal has spread. I am truly sorry for the loss of your father. But if I can help you in any way, please let me know. You have? Oh my. This brings to light a sad affair for the Brotherhood. But perhaps it is something that you can assist us with. If you have the time, I have an offer for you. Good. As I'm sure you've noticed, the Brotherhood operates all over the DC ruins, often detached from the main base here at the Citadel. We're short on communication equipment, so many of the groups in the field operate as independent cells, without standing orders. Sometimes, I'm afraid that their missions end in their deaths. As Keeper of the Scrolls, it's my charge to write of each fallen brother's deeds. Exactly. A brother fallen in the field may have no one to carry word of his death back to me. In calmer times, we could send detachments and messengers to learn their fates. But with our manpower stretched thin, we have no such luxury. Which is why I must now ask you for your help. Each brother wears a holotag like the one you found. Should you find any of the fallen brethren in the field, I ask that you return their tags to me, so that I might record their deeds in the scrolls. Scrolls are kept by the head librarian of each Brotherhood bunker. The scrolls are a record of the Brotherhood itself. Into each scroll is written the name and deeds of each of our brothers. Battles, what technology is recovered, when he was promoted, everything. The last entry for each brother is that brother's death. It is important, as the way a man dies is just as important as the manner in which he lives. And so, each man who nobly serves the brotherhood ascends into our history to be remembered by those who come after him. They are on our fallen brothers throughout the DC ruins. However, I can't give you a full report on the locations of all of our operations. As I said, many of the units in the field operate independently, sometimes not reporting into the Citadel for weeks or months. As I told you, with the increase in super mutant activity and Elder Lion's edicts regarding our goals, we are critically short on manpower. Any soldier that I would ask to do this task is one less soldier fighting in the field or defending the Citadel. 
As much as I hate to involve outsiders, it is necessary if I am to properly maintain the scrolls to honor the dead. We have access to a great deal of technology, and because of that, there are a number of things that we can continue to produce. I will be able to offer you caps for the tags you bring me, but from time to time, I will be able to give you something a bit more interesting. Yes, what about them? Have you? It saddens me to hear of my fallen brethren, but their names and deeds shall be records. Tell me, how many have you found? Their names shall be written into the scrolls to be remembered forever. As for you, here's your reward. Use it well and in good health. Ah, one of my favorite subjects, of course. What would you like to know? We believe in technology, in the triumph of the creations of the ancients over the horrors and evils of the wasteland. We believe in trust. Trust in technology. Trust in our fellow brothers. Trust in our elders. Ah, and we believe in victory. Our forces have dwindled, but still we fight on. Super mutant, enclave, it matters not. Surrender is not an option. We first arrived in the Capital Wasteland in 2255. In those first couple of years, we discovered the Citadel, Super Mutants, and Project Purity. Ah, the Purifier. What an undertaking. The work your father and his team did was amazing. The Brotherhood helped protect them, you know, at least for a little while. But we were stretched thin as it was, even back then. We had to pull our forces out. When we did, the place was overrun. I imagine that's when your father left. I... I'm sorry. I wish things had turned out differently. Very well. Well, there are a number of orders within the scribes, each dedicated to a specific area of research. Actually, I am Proctor of the Order of the Quill. I oversee the archives and library here in the Citadel. We are dedicated to preserving the history of the Brotherhood, as well as unearthing the secrets of the pre-war civilizations. We have a single field associate, Scribe Yearly. She operates out of the former Library of Congress to the Northeast. The Order of the Sword, defensive research, the Order let me know if you need something else. Quite a few, but most are distinctly unladylike and unworthy of discussion. I will tell you that the Brotherhood has encountered the Enclave before, and their motives were just as sinister then as they are now. The Brotherhood has been battling super mutants for decades, first out west, then in Chicago, now here. But this group of super mutants is different somehow. Physically, yes, but mentally as well. If we knew where they came from, we'd know why. I look forward to our next meeting. She's got the right idea, in a sense, if she knew where the super mutants came from. And, and yeah, um, actually, uh, finding where they came from might uncover a, a lot more stuff than just picking up random laser pistols in the wasteland. You know, that type of stuff. So, anyway. Alright, so we've got a location. And, uh, actually, going to get Clover is going to be kind of a necessity because we're going to have to get, uh, unenslave some children along the way. Which would be probably my last good deed for the game. <laughs> Most likely. Well, I don't know. I can't say that. But, uh,. Even though I want to be a real evil bastard, uh, yeah, sorry, enslaving, abusing children, no, um, yeah, certainly draw the limit there. Ah, uh, you're back. You need something else now. Ah, well, that much I believe I can help with. Step over here for a moment. I'll show you where it is. 
I know he's all really acting like I'm taxing his resources and his patience type of thing, but honestly, they don't owe me anything. They didn't even have to let me in the door. Like I say, normally out in the wasteland, they just run over people, you know, just to get what they're looking for. And we're just like some Yaogwai or some mole rat on the side of the road, as that's how they view wastelanders that aren't in power armor type of thing. And technology takes precedence above all else and blah, 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 and this and that. Like I say, they're inhumanity and that type of thinking. You'd think, well, that's just doomed to failure. And you see the Brotherhood failing, you know, solely but surely, in its own little way. Along with all the other groups trying to come in and, and reuse the same old techniques from before the war, trying to think that it's going to fix something, and that those techniques in and of themselves are what caused the war. War never changes. Neither is the mentality of the people who fight in these things and start these things. Okay? I know war is a, an essential tool to get rid of the assholes who kill peace-loving people, sure enough. But, uh... Most of the people who start this stuff, wow, they're just real pieces of work. That's what I'm talking about. Better dead than red. He's he's the coolest thing ever, man. Liberty Prime is is just epic. Shows the awesome. Of all known vaults in the local area. Vault 87 has been highlighted for you. There. Entrance to Vault 87 will be particularly difficult for you, I'm afraid. The area is highly irradiated. Lethal levels are all around the entrance. Gaining direct access will be quite impossible quite simply you don't to attempt such a thing would be certain death for you you share your father's determination it seems and in this case you are correct there may well be another way vault 87 is located very close to the site of lamplight caverns it is entirely probable that the vault may be entered from within the caves. Attempts were made, but all resources are stretched thin. The radiation proved fatal, and so our efforts were focused elsewhere. Perhaps you will have more success. I wish we could do more, but the Brotherhood potentially faces a very pressing very real threat in the Enclave. All of my efforts must now be devoted to assessing the threat they may pose to us. I'm sure you understand. Alright, like I say, I'm not sure exactly what puts all these on, on the Pip-Boy, but all those even undiscovered vault locations should be on our Pip-Boy map now. Give us kind of idea where we're going. And uh, we're going to head to one of them. I think it's 106? I think it's 106, 108, whatever. 106, I think. Anyway, we'll head there. It's kind of a, it's the acid trip vault. That's what I call it. And the science bobblehead is there. And then we'll go grab a couple more bobbleheads. Maybe grab Clover. Got some stuff to do. And uh, we're going to need to release the kids to get in the lamp, little lamplight anyway. I think little lamplight caverns is um, what they show you. People walking into like essentially like the side of a mountain type thing. I think that's what's referred to on like the posters. That you see with the big vault boy standing there and saying, you know, peace and security with, you know, vault tech and all this. And it shows people uh, fi lining up to go into this thing. Funny how it winds up being the probably most uh, devious, most sadistic of all the vaults as far as the experimenting that was going on there. We'll see about that later. Anyway, like I said, okay, so... Vault location is here. I think Jury Street is probably the closest thing. So I'm gonna run some errands, go trade in some stuff, blah blah blah, go to the house, and then I'll just meet you meet you guys at Jury Street and I'll we'll carry on from there. Alright, thanks for watching. If you wanna subscribe, click that button up top, and for the rest of this let's play up to this point, click that image in the middle, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care, bye bye.